Hey guys, welcome back. I have cleaned off my workbench. It'll probably be a mess within 10 minutes, but we're going to start a new project here, which is um, assembling a F5J Liberty from CCM in Ukraine. And we're going to start out with the center panel, which is on the bench. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. As far as uh, hollow core molded sailplanes go can't get better quality than the CCM absolutely the best um, so this is brand new and this is the way it comes from CCM we have the uh, IDS arms already installed here and the wiring and the connectors in place and so all we gotta do basically is put the servos in we're gonna be using the KST X10 Mini because this is a, a medium model so we're not super concerned about weight and we're going to be using um, the Servo Ramen IDS for the X10 uh, the mono so it's not the foam type and we won't need the arms but uh, we'll use the the actual frame and, and these guys right here to get that going so let's let's get started all right just doing some prep um, got servo frame here sanded on the bottom and some notches filed in the sides just to help adhesion this is what the what it looks like out of the bag you can see I trimmed back the back of the frame there because we won't need that and I cut off the brace which goes back here if we can use it. Sometimes you can't use it if you don't have enough space. So I'm gonna start with um, the the middle arm here on this uh, parts tree. Or actually, it's not the middle one. Is it's um, let's see, it's the third from the smallest. So one, two, three. I'm gonna start with that and see how it goes. I've cut it off the tree and I have. Just sanded. I have just sanded some of the burrs off the bottom there because it has some flashing. So I've just filed that off. And I've also gone in here and kind of just filed the sides because I find these are generally tight with the arm that goes in here. So I just do a little bit of filing just to make sure everything moves freely. And what I'm going to do next is kind of just seat the uh, the servo horn I guess you'd call this a servo horn on the servo and these can be pretty tight and it's easy to deform the uh, the teeth in here so I have some grease on the end of my um, exacto knife and I'm actually I'm just put it on the uh, output shaft just a little bit just to help the arm go on. I find this makes it easier. You don't need a whole lot. And then I'm just going to try to find a tooth. Sometimes this can be tricky. I'm just going to try to feel it. I think. So I got it started, but it's uh, it's tight. So I'm just gonna give it some pushes here. Again, sometimes they go on easy, and sometimes they don't. This one went on pretty easy. You can see it's pretty flush with the case of the servo there. So that's good. We'll leave that on there for now, and we'll just pop the bearing on here. Why not? And this will go in the frame. Well, it doesn't really want to go. There we go. Everything seems to be tight with these servo ramen parts, so that's how that is. Now I want to see if this ledge actually will 
come close to hitting the uh, bottom skin because if it does we can use use this as a nice bonding surface sometimes it doesn't and you have to um, basically cut cut that ledge off we'll see what we got going on here so just get the get the wing in the frame and I want to remove the lead or the wire and we're just going to kind of drop this down to get an idea of where it might want to sit probably something like this um, there is a big gap basically between that ledge and the bottom surface of the skin that's okay I can fill that with a piece of Rosal foam or other kind of foam and still use it so that's fine um, now that I have this one kind of sorted out I'm gonna go ahead and prep the other side and uh, do a few more things before we can actually get to uh, bonding the servos in. All right, I've got the horns on both my servos, and what I'd like to do is I like to put the horns on at full down deflection. So I use a servo tester to move the servo all the way to the down position, max travel, and then I put the horn on, and I make sure that both servos are identical. And as you, if you can see here, um, that way would be towards the flap and the arm is basically um, horizontal with the top of the servo it's down slightly um, I could have moved it so if I put if I put this file like through the center it's it's angled up about 20 degrees or so I could have moved it one more spline like this but really from zero to about this I don't know 15 20 degree position or, or less the arm isn't doing anything, it's just, if you can imagine the arc of travel, it's basically just going down, so um, that's why I put the arm at this kind of 15, 20 degree angle up, so as soon as the arm starts moving, the flap will start um, getting pulled up. And the reason why I have the horn set up like this is, if you can imagine the flap at full down deflection and this is the push rod going to the control horn um, everything's kind of locked out like this so the force from the flap being down goes through the uh, servo arm here and into the um, bearings of the um, K into the case bearings and into the bearing right here for the IDS and it's not um, like if we were to have full down travel with this horn up a little bit like that the the push rod would be basically um, forcing the gears you know you'd be putting all that pressure on the gears and the gears have tiny teeth so you could run into some uh, damage not as critical with um, servo like this but if you're using like smaller x08s or something like that it becomes more critical um, so keep that in mind and to get very precise adjustments uh, on the uh, centers of the servos to match them up, I use this new um, little KST um, servo uh, setter programmer. Just basically just sets the neutral, and it's a pretty handy little tool to have uh, in your workbench if you're using KST servos. I got my servos basically ready to go. Um, I've put some of the cut up some pieces of just the packaging, the plastic packaging that the servo ROM and IDS kits came in to use as a barrier between the servo and the glue. You can see it extends all the way up to this edge basically. And I always uh, forget not to glue these braces in, but you don't want to glue the brace at this point here because you want to be able to remove this brace to slide the servo out. So. That's why the plastic bag extends over that. And I've put um, a couple of tiny pieces of masking tape over the holes for these mounting screws. 
because I find that um, the epoxy does get in there and it's all fine um, if the servo stays in place but when you take if you need to take the servo out to replace it or make an adjustment um, when you put it back in these screws really never kind of line up to where they were and if you over tighten it just barely it'll hit that epo the epoxy that seeped up into those holes and it'll leave you with those impressions that nobody likes on the top skin of their model so that's why I taped those up to try to prevent that as much as possible so um, both of these are basically ready to go here and the next thing I'm going to do is just sand the um, servo base slightly with some coarse grit sandpaper this is a uh, hundred grit There is a rough texture in here already, and I think um, the idea behind that is you don't need to sand, but I, I like to just sand a little bit anyway. And we also want to remember to um, get the bottom of this surface here because we are going to be bonding to that as well. So just go ahead and do that on both sides and then um, blow it out or vacuum it out and clean the surface with some uh, alcohol or similar. Just give you a quick look at the pre-installed uh, IDS horn here. So this came from the factory like this, and they really did just a an excellent job there. A very clean installation, and they're using the um, the mid-sized IDS arm, which I like. It's very stout. Again, just fantastic quality, and the the colored gap seals. I don't know, it's just great. It really sets it off. Just about ready to glue the servos in. What I've done is prepped some foam blocks for the um, the pads right here so they'll get kind of glued on like this and that'll tie this pad to the bottom skin of the wing make it a little more uh, secure. And I have also made some I guess you could call these like gauges um, 78 degrees which would actually be this angle but you get the point um, so the plan with these I, I, I really want to try to make this uh, install as identical as possible between both flaps so let me show you what I want to do with these so theoretically once the servos are glued or the uh, resin has been applied uh, I can use these gauges like this basically to set the flap at the full down position um, then I can just tape them down in place I've made two of these for both both sides so I haven't done this before I just um, would typically just eyeball the flaps but I figured why not try to get another level of precision into this so I've I've prepped two of these and I think now we're ready to mix up some epoxy and get everything installed. Alright, we're going to try to get the servos glued in place. So I have mixed up my usual epoxy slurry here, really high quality 24 hour cure laminating resin with some cabosil or aerosol or whatever you want to call it mixed in. Um, and I'm just going to brush a little bit down where the servo goes. And I'll put a little bit on the um, servo tray itself.
And I think a good idea would be to put some masking tape on the servo bay because we put epoxy on the uh, servo frame. And better to keep things as clean as possible for now, so we'll wipe everything down after, but just for now, get some tape going here. I got this arm raised up. So we'll try to finagle the servo in place without getting too messy. Looks pretty good. Let's see if I can zoom in here a little more. And then I'm going to try to attach the arm. So we need a pin. And grabbed a pair of hemostats. Sometimes this pin goes in real easy, other times you have to really mess around with it. Oh, got lucky. That one went in fairly easy. Push it in, not all the way. Cuz you don't want it to you don't want it to poke out the other side of the arm. So you want to leave about, oh, I'd say about uh, maybe two and a half millimeters exposed on this side here. So that's in, that's good. We'll kind of just leave that alone for now, and I'll go ahead and do the uh, other side, and then we'll work, work on putting the pad in here. I got the flaps um, taped. So they're full down and I use these kind of gauges to measure both surfaces. Let me pull this back a little bit. You see what I got going on here. So here and here. And the servos are both at the full down deflection. And what I want to do now is try to get these foam blocks in. Uh, this is Rosal foam. If you don't have this, you can use uh, some balsa. Something like that would be just fine. So, okay, it seems like these are gonna fit pretty good. Check the other side. That one needs a little bit of sanding. So I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to kind of sand on these a little bit to make sure they fit. And I want about uh, maybe a half a millimeter or a millimeter gap because we need room for the epoxy. So I'll go ahead and sand these. I've sanded the blocks so they fit nice and easy in here. I've just kind of stuck it on the end of my X-Acto knife. And I'm going to simply put some epoxy top and bottom. Ok, 
Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and just try to slide it in place. And wiggle the knife to get it out. And I did manage to get some epoxy on the arm here, so I'm just going to scrape that off with the exacto. Wipe off that excess there. Alright, and do the same thing for the other side, and then I'm just going to make sure that the servos are in the exact position I want, so they're not twisted. Then we'll put some weight on them and uh, let this cure overnight. However, it's been pretty cold back here in my workshop lately, so it might take up to two days for this epoxy to fully set. I'm just going to clean up the edges here in case I have any epoxy that made it onto the tape. I have rubbing alcohol on my paper towel. Do the same for both sides. And it's always a good idea to go over all the areas um, directly surrounding you know the servo bays, anywhere you might have touched just to see if you have any epoxy anywhere and wipe it off with some alcohol and a paper towel and now what I want to do is just see if the servos are square, so I'll put a uh, the square on the hinge line and just see how it lines up to my servo so we have a slight twist um, servo needs to kinda move back like that I'll do that on both sides and then we can just put some weight on it when we sort of have it in the position that we want and then just leave it alone and let it cure. These are uh, some old ballast slugs so at this point I would just let this cure completely overnight and we can move on to um, the servo covers and a few other little details. Alright guys the epoxy's cured um, I made a mistake so I had to kind of backtrack I um, told myself in my head to check the, the travels um, on the servo, um, a, you know, up aileron and full flap, and I didn't, I just grabbed that servo, uh, the servo arm off the, the parts tree, um, just because it looked right, but I didn't actually test the travels, so um, when I checked the travels after the epoxy had cured, I wasn't getting any uh, up aileron throw at all. So I had to go back and actually put um, a new horn on the servo. So initially I used the third one over from the, the shortest. And then I had to end up actually using the second one over from the longest here. So the distance um, from here to the pin, from the center of the servo hub to the pin is 10 millimeters, which is this guy here. So if you're building this, with, you know, for different brand servos or different size, um, if you still use that 10 millimeter distance on your servo arm, you'll 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 be good. You won't have to worry about it. And because I had had to use a long servo arm, I ended up having to replace these push rods for shorter ones um, from the IDS parts tree. So. A little bit of messing around, you know, hemming and hawing, but I got it done, and we the the end uh, in the end we got the same travels um, or the same down flap as we uh, would have. So I'll show you what we got going on here. Let me zoom out. This is our 
down travel and our up travel. Really happy with that. Both sides match up really well. They're within like a millimeter of each other, so super happy about that. Um, won't be much imbalance in the throws. Um, I'm going to remove the masking tape and then we're going to go on to um, putting the servo covers on. Alright, I've hooked up the wires and put some electrical tape around them just to secure them and we'll just stash them up by the spar here. And these are the servo covers, they're pre-cut plastic covers. And they fit pretty good, but I think I'll have to do a little bit of trimming. I need to take about a millimeter off one edge on each side. This one and that one. So I'm just going to kind of trim them with scissors and um, maybe sand if I have to. I'm just going to take a little bit off each side, not much. Or just two sides, I should say. And we'll do that with both sides. Sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper to smooth things out a little bit. And round the corners back. I have some 300. I'll go over it again. So the covers are fitting really well, and I'm just going to give things a wipe down with some um, alcohol. Both sides. And I'm going to use some pinstripe tape I got off Amazon. This is, I think, half inch wide. And I'm going to use that to hold the covers down. This is really thin stuff, and I like using it. You could also use a very thin double-sided tape or like a canopy glue if you wanted. Something that you could uh, remove easily if you need to service the servos. Do not use CA or epoxy to glue your servo covers down. Um, you know who you are, because I've witnessed that recently at a contest um, when we had to do a servo replacement 
on a friend's plane. It was not pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, covers taped on. So I peeled the backing off and I just kind of tack it on again at the end. This lets me apply it uh, a little neater, have a little more control over it. So I'm going to line, this is a 50 millimeter one, I'm going to line it up kind of halfway and just get that end started and push down like that. Do the other side the same way. And you can do whatever you want with these. You can use whatever kind of tape you want. Or double sided tape or canopy glue works well too. Like that. And I got some longer pieces. go pretty clean oh also servo ramen makes stickers that you can just flop on there too that's a good option but they're green and orange and uh, I like these to be a little more stealth so there you go both of them are done next thing to do is uh, I gotta fish the uh, the lead out or the wire out of this hole for the uh, aileron servo and I've actually 3d printed some little I don't know what you'd call these caps or something that I'm going to use to glue the uh, servo connector into the end of the wing here just so you don't have a loose wire dangling on the center panel now I printed these for uh, another Liberty I had built and it seems like the holes have changed a little bit so I'm gonna have to open these up just a little bit with a file to get this to fit nicer. Okay, I just put some tape here and trace the uh, 3D printed plug or whatever you want to call it and I'm just gonna use my rotary tool and open that guy up a little bit Then we'll go back with a file. And do the finish work. Do some test fitting here. And I'll just keep going until I get a pretty snug fit. Time to fish that wire out. So I've got a bit of this soft steel wire here and I just put a hook on one end 
and I'm just going to attempt to reach in here and get this wire out. Go. And then I'm going to see if it actually fits through this uh, 3D printed piece. So it looks like I'm going to have to open this up slightly. Probably not much. I got this fitting quite nicely. Just had to barely open it up with the file. Happy with that. And now what I'm going to do is scuff up the uh, servo connector, the housing, because we're going to glue that to the 3D printed part. Give it a good scuff. And I like to make some kind of deeper channels with the end of my X Acto knife, like crisscross kind of thing. go <clears throat> So I'm going to push the connector into the 3D printed plug just so it's flush with the end looks good to me and then we will apply some CA Move it around, get a nice fillet going. A little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Got some accelerator somewhere. And then basically, I'm just going to use some 15 minute epoxy to um, set this in place in the end of the wing and we'll have a nice clean setup so I'm gonna go ahead and just repeat this on the other side off camera. It's time to glue these into the end of the center panel and I just want to show you these little I call them tools that I made probably almost 10 years ago it's just a piece of plywood And I've cut out the um, profile of a servo connector. And these have been heavily waxed with mold release. 
uh, and I, I wax them every so often, but all I do is just push the uh, connector through, and it kind of hits a stop like that, and the connector's all waxed up too. But I just will plug these. into this connector like that, right? And then we have this wall here and if I push the connector in that wall provides a stop and allows me to mount that connector in the wing flush with the the wing root and just use some masking tape to hold it in place as the epoxy cures. So that's something you guys can make. See how it looks. I'll zoom in on it. Alright, it's really simple. Again, this plywood's all waxed up. So I've made, I have two of these. Again, they've been in my drawer for years. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix up some 15 minute epoxy and get these glued in place. Okay, got 15 minute epoxy with just a touch of cabosil, not much at all. And I'm going to go ahead and just apply some to the back side of this connector Now you don't have to do any of this, you could just have your wires hanging out and tape them to the end of the wing root when you're done flying or something. That'll work fine, but I like to keep things clean and I'm building this for a customer, so generally try to build things as nice as possible for people. Plus there isn't a whole lot of work to do on these fancy molded airplanes, so the little details kind of I don't know, they're kind of therapeutic when you when when you do them. Got to work somewhat fast cuz it is 15 minute epoxy and I like to line the bevels of the um you know the bevels on the servo plug? I like to keep those down, so we're going to need the positive, or the, uh, I should say, the uh, the negative towards us. So I'll flip that over, and we'll just push that in there. Squeeze her on, and we need some masking tape. Now I always fold over an end of my masking tape so I don't have to dig into the wing to try to pull off the tape when the glue is dry like that perfect and then I'll do the other side off camera and we'll let this cure for a couple hours this epoxy's cured so let's see what the results are. There we go, and hopefully we'll be able to just pull this bit of tape off.
So it's pretty clean. It's fairly flush. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup work just with an X-Acto knife. But uh, in the end, I think we have a solid result. And a nice clean wing root with no wires hanging out. Alright, I cleaned up those um, servo connectors and everything's looking really good. That about wraps up the center panel on the F5J Liberty. Let me show you how the uh, end of this looks. So fairly clean and nice and flush. Um, I would say this is one of the quickest building center panels that I've ever um, assembled for an F5J model. Mostly due to the fact that the horns and the push rods are already installed. Had I not made the mistake of putting on the shorter arm on the servo initially, it would have went uh, really quick. I could have basically had the whole thing done, um, not not counting waiting for the glue to dry, but but in about an hour I would say. So really quick to build and came out great. Again, used the 10 millimeter servo arm on the with the IDS kits and, and uh, use the push rod that's pre-installed and you'll be you'll be just fine so we'll move on to uh, probably doing the tip panels next but that's gonna wrap it up for this video I'll see you in the next one